Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about the Dead Air Ghost, the 45 caliber pistol specific suppressor from Dead Air. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we go. We've talked about other suppressors from Dead Air, uh, rifle suppressors, pistol suppressors, right? Pistol caliber carbine suppressors. This is Dead Air's pistol specific 45 caliber suppressor, okay? We like to talk about suppressors being used for specific things. Again, kudos to Dead Air for making a suppressor specific towards a niche, right? A thing. Instead of just being the end all be all, which those don't work in my opinion, this suppressor is made specifically for a specific purpose, all right? So without getting into any anything else, let's just go ahead and jump into some specs, right? Some people really love specs. If you really wanna look it up, go to Dead Air's website. I think it's just deadair.com. Just look that up and you'll find it. And you can look up all the specs and information you want to know about them. Um, but we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about what comes in the box and we'll just get into it, all right? All right, so up on screen right now, you should have the spec sheet. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of read it off for you here, all right? We have caliber rating. It's 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, 9 millimeter, 30 carbine, 300 blackout, and subsonic in parentheses. Not supers, subsonic. Energy rating is 850 foot-pounds, bore diameter is 45 ACP, and the short length, this suppressor is 6.2 inches, and the long length, the suppressor is 8.75 inches. Diameter, this is an interesting note, is 1.375, okay? So it's a, it's, a, it's a pistol can, it's smaller, okay? The weight in the short configuration is 9.6 ounces. The weight in the long configuration is a flat 12 ounces. Materials are stainless steel, titanium, and aluminum. Note, there is no stellite, and that's this is not a hard-use rifle can at all. This is a pistol can. Keep that stuff in mind. Finish is Cerakote and some nitrided attachments. Usage. With stainless steel baffles, you, should, you don't have to worry about um, overworking the Ghost M, whatever usage. You're not going to overwork it with pistol caliber stuff. You start trying to throw in rifle things, you're you're trying to you're trying to pull a trailer with a with a stinking Honda Civic. It's just not going to work. All right. MSRP is about 950 bucks. No barrel restrictions, and yes, it is full auto rated. Okay, so that's the information they give you from the website. Just read straight off their website, basically for you there. Um, just things to keep in mind. We love I, I love to harp on specific use cans. This is a pistol can. All right, it can work on a couple different other things with a couple different different other attachments, but you're not going to take this pistol can, lightweight as it is, throw it on your AR-15 and say, "I got a lightweight can on here." Yeah, it's going to be a little loud, but it's going to work. Now you're you're going to damage things. You're probably going to break it. It's not made for that. It's just not. So keep this guy within his wheelhouse, and you should be happy. All right, the stuff that comes in the box for those people that really care. Um, I've only had this guy for less than a year, so not very long. I don't have a terrible whole bunch of bunch of rounds through it. Enough to kind of have a, you know, I got an opinion on it, right? Um, but it's not like I have thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through this. I just, I just don't. Sorry. This is not what this is about. Um, but that being said, they may have changed the box over the years. I'm not sure exactly. Some people really like the aesthetics of things. Oops. But it just has the sleeve. It's got the little weird looking mini little logos and the big logo. And then it's the little magnetic, this is magnetic, um, attachment box, right? It comes, it just opens up just like that. Yeah, there you go. It says dead air. Opens up like that and it's magnetic. So if you start peeling it and it starts like peeling, go to the other side of the box and it'll open up. I guess that's something to pay attention to. I don't know. Because there's no reason to tear the box up. It is kind of cool, but whatever. Um, other stuff that comes in here, instead of a user manual, you get this little guy, a little card here with a QR code. So I don't know if you can even see that through the, uh, through the magic of camera stuff, but if you can scan that, then there you go. You go to their website, you can look up all the specs and leave the video and not worry about anything I say because you can get it all from the website. <laughs> um, anyway, we also have a decal sticker. Again, I don't really use those. And this one did come with the cigar wrapper thingy, right? So they kept that tradition going. looks like it's a cigar wrapper. Um, we also have a takedown tool or an in, a front cap removal tool, right? This is the same front cap removal tool that is used with the mask, or yeah, yeah, the mask, uh, the 22 can. Same tool, interestingly enough, same tool. So, what do we get? Um, oh, also it comes with the suppressor. But what do we get with the suppressor? What um, comes with this thing was all that stuff, and I forgot to mention, it comes with a booster assembly, no piston. 
keep that in mind, all right? Some people are going to harp and complain and say, it needs to come with the piston and it didn't come ready to use right out of the box. Well, they don't know if you're gonna run this on a Glock 19 or a 1911. They do not know what kind of piston you need. If you wanted them to raise the price to like 1100 bucks or something like that, they could probably do that for you and then include four or five different pistons in there. They could do that, but you're probably only gonna use one of those pistons and then that's just wasted money put in on the rest of the pistons. Does that make sense? So that's why they give you the booster that works with the suppressor, but then it's up to you to figure out what host you're gonna use this on and get the, the appropriate piston for that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna take this guy apart real quick. It does not come with takedown tools. Uh, that's one thing I wish it kind of did, um, but it does not come with takedown tools. But here is the booster assembly, the whole thing. See this little, copper piece sticking out the back here. Get that. Could you try it? No, I'm not gonna try that again. Um, the copper piece sticking out the back here, that's the piston. The booster assembly, actually if I put this guy back in, it's easier to take it apart this way because it holds everything still. I'm just gonna screw this guy out. Here we go. If I can get the hold still, there we go. So the booster assembly has this rear piece. This is super dirty, wow and that's super dry. Let's get this rear piece, and on the inside here, it has a rubber like gasket thing. Keep that guy lubed up. You don't want it to wear out. Um, you have your spring, right? You have your piston. This is what does not come with this whole setup. You gotta find your own piston. And then the rest of the housing, the booster housing right here, this little guy. So really, this the assembly, the booster assembly comes with four different pieces, all right? If you don't know why you need a booster assembly, you can look it up. Pistols have a barrel that moves, and in order for the pistol to cycle, you it, basically what this does is it kind of detaches the suppressor from the gun during cycling, okay? It helps the gun to cycle. If you just directly threaded a suppressor onto your pistol, you get one shot and the gun doesn't cycle and you got a single shot. Maybe that's what you want, but most people don't want to do that, okay? So that's just a layman's version of what these things do, okay? Some of them work better than other ones. This is the one that comes with this. It works fine for me. Um, it is specific towards the, the ghost, right? Spe specific towards the ghost and the wolfman, right? It's the same... Uh, pist a piston, same booster assembly that works on the Ghost and that works on the Wolfman, right? Those are the same ones. The other pistol suppressor from Dead Air is the Odessa, and that uses a completely different thing. Completely different, okay? So, anyway, put this guy back together real quick. We'll go ahead and put the assembly, or the housing, we'll put the housing into the suppressor, all right? Then we will take our piston, and I particularly use, particularly, I like to use the Griffin Armament Camlock pistons because it, it it basically allows me to not have to take this whole thing apart every time I wanna switch it between handguns that use different threads, right? Let's say I have a 40, right? And it's got five eighths by 24 threads or whatever. It doesn't, it has something else weird. Um, and I have a nine millimeter. So I could have to take this thing apart to use half by 28 threads on my nine millimeter and the funky whatever threads on, uh, on the 40, they use different pistons, right? So, I could keep taking this guy apart every time I change host, or the Griffin Armament cam lock system allows me to basically use an attachment on the pistol, right? And then the same piston in the suppressor. So I don't have to take it apart all the time. Hope that makes sense. I need to make another dedicated video to the um, these pistons, but that is what it is. Uh, but make sure whenever you do get a piston, make sure for sure, for sure, for sure, it is the correct one that works with whatever booster assembly you're going to use. They're not all the same, they're not universal, there's nothing universal about it, okay? It's not, it'd be like trying to use a, a six lug tire on, a, on, a, on an eight lug truck. Does that make sense? It's just not gonna work right, right? Pretty much, because this does have lugs on it and they match up and they do things, right? So, p piston goes in, spring goes in, doesn't matter which way. Um, you should keep this guy lubricated. I should lubricate this guy up, he's pretty dry. Um, but you're gonna press this guy down and then you're gonna make sure you don't cross thread anything and just screw him on. And then he's set up for the for the Griffin Armament cam lock system, he's set up, he's good. I should. The only reason I'd ever have to really take this guy apart is to clean it and or uh, to lube it up because it's gonna need to end up getting lubed up. Now I'm all nasty. Okay, so that's the piston, right? That's what this guy is for, um, specifically for. This is a this is a pistol can. So for for pistols, let's let's put it on a. Uh, here is a 
basically a Glock 19, right? Glock 19 size gun has the cam lock system on there. If it wasn't a cam lock system, you would just end up direct threading and that's the only difference. This is just easy to put on, take off. Instead of direct threading, that's the only difference. But the can itself, everything's the same. So, I know you're probably not gonna be able to tell because the camera doesn't like to, to function very well like this. I might try to take a picture, I might not, or I might just say, take my word for it. But I have suppressor height sights. I can clearly see over the top of the suppressor. Remember, the suppressor is 1 in 1.375 inches in diameter. It's not a one, it's not a one and a half inch can. Those one and a half inch cans, it might sound better, but you're not going to be able to see your sights if that's really what you want to do. And I have a red dot on here. I can clearly see the red dot. It's not really obscured. It does what it needs to do. All right, so that's something to keep in mind, right? Standard height sights is still not going to look over the suppressor, but these are suppressor height sights. They're gonna work for you just fine, all right? So that's kind of, this is this is what this guy is for, right? Pistols, this is where this guy lives. This is its niche, 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 whatever. This is what it is for, okay? Now you can use it on different other things. We'll talk about that in just a second, but that's what it's for, all right? Let's just keep that under control. All right, so moving on a little bit, this is a Ghost slash M. It's modular, kind of like how the Wolfman was modular. You can take the front, like third, you might say, it's the front third. Take the front third of this guy off, right? And these are all aluminum baffles. These are all the, um, the stainless steel baffles, right? So they kept the weight close to the host. Haha, <laughs> that rhyme, close to the host. So they keep the weight closer to you and the further you get out, they add the aluminum baffles because really, they're safer out here, right? The aluminum baffles, they're not gonna take as much heat, they're not gonna take as much blast and everything. Uh, they're not going to erode and have as much wear further out from the host. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. If you're going to take this guy down and make it into the short configuration, he's going to end up falling down. You can, this is all hand tight right now, but that's with the end cap removable tool. Just kind of hooks up on there. It's knurled so you can unscrew it. You take your front cap off, okay? And then you need to remove the last baffle. The other baffles in here are blue. Right, they are different. They look different than the baffles that are in the suppressor itself. Well, there we go. Now they all came out. There we go. Um, they're different than these guys. These guys are the steel ones. They look more like steel. They're not blue, so there's a visual difference. So you don't get them mixed up. All right. They kind of clip together too, since we're already talking about this. They kind of clip together. You see how they have these little notches. Um, if they're not lined up, you're gonna obviously see, and when they are lined up, they're gonna all click together and basically create a seal, right? They kind of seal everything up. Um, it just kind of works a little bit better that way. Kind of helps the suppressor be a little bit cleaner or run a little bit cleaner, but that's just how you take the gun apart. That's how you, the gun, that's how you take the suppressor apart. Really, if that's how you're gonna clean it, right? Which I don't clean mine, I should. But if you are gonna clean it, that's how you take it apart. Take those things out, throw them in an ultrasonic if you want to, the steel ones. Don't throw the aluminum ones in there apparently because they pit and they can damage stuff, whatever. Just spray it down with CLP and wipe it off. Take a screwdriver and knock off any big chunks of lead or carbon. I don't really worry about it. Anyway, to make this guy into the short configuration, that last baffle that was in the end, it is different than all the other baffles, so you're not gonna get it mixed up. It does not have a little notch it needs to index on. You simply drop that guy in the top. You take your front cap and you just Tighten it down on there, right? Now, you don't want this to be loose, right? But you don't need to go super ape crazy on it. You need it to be nice and tight, and there you go. And when it's nice and tight, this end, this front cap, it is gonna stick up. It's gonna look a little weird. This does not screw all the way down and become flush. It doesn't do that. So, yeah, I mean, if you somehow managed to get it screwed down that far, I think you'd strip everything out before you did that. But that's the short configuration. Get our host back out. This actually ends up looking a lot better right? That ends up looking a lot better. And it, I mean, yeah, it adds a little bit of weight to the end of the gun, but this is not that heavy of a can anyway. This is specifically meant for this stuff. So in my experience, it works pretty stinking good. Being a 45 caliber suppressor, um, it allows more gases and things out the front of the gun. And it allows it, 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 it well, it doesn't negate, but it is not as bad as far as backblast and shooting a whole bunch of stuff back into the gun because since it's overboard for a nine millimeter, that gas goes out the front of the gun versus coming back at you, right? So it might be louder to people around you, but it's probably gonna be a little bit quieter to you 
right? In general, that's how it works because you don't have that port pop as bad coming back at you. Does that make sense? Now it's all relative, depends on what caliber you use, depends on the action of your firearm, all that kind of stuff, but that's just something to note a little bit. All right, but that's the short configuration there. Um, I generally I generally like the short configuration because it's just nice and it's just it just works for me, right? It just takes the edge off, basically what it does. It's not a super hush puppy quiet kind of thing, whatever. It's just nice, right? I like it. Um, so talk about some modularity here real quick. Since this does use the same mounting thread attachment system, whatever you want to call it, as the Wolfman, we will go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll show you what this guy looks like with some of those Wolfman attachments, right? So you have your piston, which again, specifically, that's what this guy is for. If you threw the chemo on here, which the only reason I could possibly think of that you would use a chemo, right, would be if you were gonna shoot this thing on a 300 blackout. Now, I don't remember it saying you needed to use a chemo with um, a break or whatever, but if you were gonna use it, remember it had to be 300 blackout subsonic, right? So if you have a little 300 blackout subsonic, right, then you should, get this guy lined up, you should be able to run this guy on here like that, right? It's lightweight. Even the key micro adapter, if you can notice that, that's one and a half inches, right? It's one and a half inches. This is smaller. It even looks a little strange because it's not its niche. It might work, it might function, but it's not gonna be the best thing out there, okay? Might function, keep that in mind. Just because it functions doesn't mean it's the best thing. But that's a 300 blackout. Other than that, I would not use this guy on any other carbine kind of things, whatever. And that was for 300 blackout subsonic only. Do not break up, mess up your cans, whatever. That's the only time I could possibly think of maybe a piece of nine millimeter PCC or something that has a, that, ha that has that mounting system on it, the, 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 the chemo mounting or key micro mounting. I don't know. I think most of those are gonna be direct thread, which you could use. I forgot to pull that one out, but it looks exact same as the, uh, um, as the trilug, except the trilug is trilug, not direct thread. But if you put the trilug in here, right, then we'll kind of look at this guy and put it on MP5, right? So if you stick this guy on the MP5, this is actually not a bad sounding can. It's lightweight and it's not huge, right? And you could, if you wanted to get some more suppression out of it, add that extra um, the extra mod module at the end and make it just a little bit um, a little bit quieter because it is a 45 caliber can This guy runs really well with regular nine millimeter cans But it is gonna just allow more stuff out instead of garbaging up your gun. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense probably didn't make any sense, but you know it is what it is um, Here's another example here. This is an AR 9 stick this guy on here. It just looks clean. It's small out of the way does not obstruct any kind of sight picture at all. And it's just, it's lightweight. And for nine millimeter PCCs, it's not a bad option or even 45, right? If you had a, like a Chris Vector or something like that, I imagine this would do great on there. I haven't, I don't have a Chris Vector, um, so I can't tell you, but I imagine it'd do great on that. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't think there's any other host that I have right here that it really needs to go on. I mean, it could go on the Scorpion. It works, works well under there. We'll go ahead and show that. Um, the Scorpion I have, this is the pistol length or the shorter uh, barrel in here and I have the carbine length handguard on here. So this guy should fit on there and there you go. So he's kind of shrouded, right? Protected, heat guarded, whatever. There's plenty of room inside here. This is a thinner um, suppressor and a nice thick um, handguard here. So you get some airflow in there. It's not gonna burn you. You know, you can grab the gun however you wanna grab the gun and, uh, and it, it'll work, it'll work, right? So that's that guy. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and head to the range. Let's shoot this guy on some different hosts, see what it sounds like. And, it, and just before we go there, um, keep in mind, the audio that you get on a video is not and will not be the same you get in person. The only way to really truly hear these things is to be in person. I can't bring all y'all out there with me. It's just not feasible to do that. Um, but I'm going to give you the best rep representation I can of the sound that it makes, right? I do not do decibel readers. I don't do any of that. Uh, those things are stupid expensive and for me honestly if if you can hear it if if I can hear it and just express how it does it ring in my ears or whatever that's subjective because everybody has different levels of hearing damage and hearing stuff whatever 
but I'm just gonna give you my opinions on it when we're out there, right? So let's head out there, let's check it out. Two subs. Alright guys, so that is the Dead Air Ghost M, right? The 45 modular suppressor from Dead Air. Um, I personally like it for its niche, for being a pistol caliber, um, or pistol, no, for being a pistol suppressor, not pistol caliber carbine, for specifically being a pistol suppressor, it works. It does what it needs to do. It's, it's a little bit less back pressure um, because it's an over, it's 45 caliber if you're shooting 9mm through it. Um, 40 is still good. I mean, it, it works. It does what it needs to do takes the edge off where it needs to take the edge off. You could make it quiet if you want to make it quiet. 300 blackout does what it needs to do. It's a good can, right? For pistols, it's a good can. It's better better than some, worse than others. It all depends on the flavor of what you're trying to get out of it, all right? But that's my two cents on it, all right? If any of you guys were lucky enough, I think back in the day they had these. What'd you get? I think you got a mask for free if you got a ghost or something vice versa maybe you bought a sandman and you get a ghost for free i don't know like f several years ago they did some crazy deal that i completely missed out on because i wasn't even interested i wish i jumped on that anyway if any of you guys jumped in on that and got one of these at that stupid crazy price or deal whatever it was let me know and you rub it in my face whatever i don't care um, but if any of you actually have one of these and have used it i'd love to get your feedback what do you find its niche is for you right for your personal use for your personal you know selection of firearms that you use it on what what is your favorite setup do you like to run it short and wet do you like to run it long and dry um or you know wiped i guess you could wipe it um let me know i'd love to know that i'd love to know that and if any of you are on the fence of buying one and you want to ask questions post the question down there if i can't answer it Hopefully somebody else will chime in there and answer it. I mean, if I can't, I'll try to find information, point you in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, if other people know that answers to whatever question you're asking, I encourage you to jump in there and answer away uh, folks' questions. Because this is fun. Suppressor stuff is fun. It really is. It's like a gateway drug. Once you start getting one, it, it changes shooting forever. It'd be like you've been driving a Model T for your whole life and you didn't even know that, you know, there were, there were Toyota Tundras out there right? It, it's different. Once you've started shooting suppressed, it's addictive. And you're like, this is just the way it should be, right? So let's encourage folks, right? Let's do this thing, all right? Appreciate you watching, subscribing, everything. Hopefully you found this entertaining um, and maybe even educational, all right? But let me know if it did. Y'all take care. Hopefully we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.